So this is a learning curve for you? Putting guns to an innocent person back? That's a learning curve. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying every, I said every call is something to learn. That's a learning curve. You put guns to my back. That's a learning curve for you? That's a learning curve. You put guns to my back. That's a learning curve. I could have died. And that's a learning curve for you? A learning curve. The woman behind the camera alleges Arlington, Texas police pulled out their firearms on her and put them to her back. A learning curve? Really? A learning curve? A learning curve? That's a learning curve. They put guns to my back. Okay. That's a learning curve. Okay. Um, a learning curve. Really? A learning curve. This video is troubling and disgusting for many innocent people who deal with crap like this on the daily. A learning. This is my life. And you want to talk about your education? A learning curve. Then she believes she catches the police in the act of deleting footage. Why are you wiping the surveillance video? Ma'am, I can't elaborate on our investigation. Why are you wiping the surveillance video? Watch it. We're not allowed to wipe it. I just heard you say until you finish wiping the surveillance video. You miss her. Hey, uh, the female that came out of 225 was running a uh, What's your best contact? Uh, If the officer did indeed call it a learning curve, and we stress these are allegations as the video picked up after the cop potentially uttered those words, if true, she should not be a public official in this line of work. This story is not getting enough visibility, so please let me give this a boost. Danielle was allegedly held at gunpoint, executioner style, by the Arlington Police Department, and it turns out they had the wrong person. But the thing is, is they were looking for a male suspect anyway. Like Dinesh, we want to give it a boost as well. Being held at gunpoint is traumatic. In that video, you can hear a woman going into shock. Accident, learning curve, these are not excuses. You know, I got into a car accident one time, and a police officer said to me, it's not an accident. If you were paying attention, it wouldn't have happened. I think those rules should apply to them as well. Uh, accident and learning curve do not excuse what happened. If they were paying attention, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I'm putting Danielle's GoFundMe in my link tree. It'll be the top link right here. Please find it in your heart to donate and help Danielle seek justice for what the Arlington Police Department did to her that night. That is absolutely unacceptable. In addition, we will link to her GoFundMe in our description box. You know, we've seen so many instances where cops show how incompetent they are, but to mistake this woman for a man is just another inexcusable moment amongst many. I suppose locally, the only credit for the story getting picked up goes to James Hartley of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, who wrote, Police said they believed after watching surveillance video that the suspect in an armed robbery at a convenience store in the 2700 block of East Abrams Street went to a nearby motel after the crime. When officers went to the motel to look for him, someone there directed them to a specific room on the second floor and said he might be inside, according to police. Officers went to that room and, because they believed the suspect was armed, approached it with their weapons drawn, quote, for their own safety and the safety of other people at the motel, police said in an emailed statement to the Star-Telegram. There's a lot, okay, that I'm going to elaborate on when it comes to taking the police at their word in just a few moments. To put a bow on this article, though, officers then gave commands for everyone inside the motel room to come out and detained a woman when she walked out of the room, police said. When police searched the room and determined the woman had nothing to do with the incident and that they'd received inaccurate information, they released the woman, according to the statement. According to police, a patrol sergeant later went to the motel lobby to speak with the woman and her mother about what had happened. Here's the issue we have. Do not take the police's word until it is factually proven. Philip Stinson, a criminologist and professor of criminal justice at Bowling Green State University, said it's fairly common for officers to lie in police reports. Stinson has tracked arrest cases of non-federal sworn law enforcement officers who have been charged with at least one crime from 2005 to 2014. His research shows that out of more than 10,000 officer arrest cases, about 6.3% involve false reports or statements. About a quarter of those cases involving false reports 
reports or statements also involve alleged acts of police violence. And he said the problem is probably more common than the data suggests. So why do officers lie in police statements? One of the reasons is simple to avoid the consequences. That's according to David Thomas, a professor of forensic studies and criminal justice at Florida Gulf Coast University and a retired police officer. When officers misrepresent incidents in police reports, it is often to justify the use of excessive force or an unlawful arrest, he said. The officer knows that they have made a mistake and are trying to avoid losing their job, criminal charges, or other disciplinary actions. Another reason is what's known as noble cause corruption, said Stinson. Officers might lie in police reports to justify an action they took, whether the use of force or a questionable arrest. Police are often operating under the mindset that they are keeping communities safe or getting criminals off the streets. So when they lie, the idea is that the ends justify the means, that their actions were ultimately for a good cause. It's an ingrained part of the police subculture in many communities across the country, Stinson said. Even if there is video of the incident showing otherwise, many officers believe that their word will mean more than the tape, Thomas said. The Innocence Project cites a New York Times article that documents the persistence of lies told by police to gain a conviction. Through their investigation, the Times discovered that in more than 25 instances since 2015, judges or prosecutors concluded that a New York City police officer likely presented false testimony. Such cases, most of which are sealed, were identified through interviews with lawyers, police officers, and current or former judges. The Times' article highlights the common lies about which police testify, including saying they saw a gun in a suspect's hand or waistband when it was actually out of view, saying they witnessed an arrest for which they were not actually present, claiming they watched a drug deal occur only to later recant or be proven to have lied. In two recent cases, officers appeared to have given false statements about eyewitness testimony. These cases, says the Times, are particularly troubling because erroneous identification by witnesses have been a leading cause of wrongful convictions. Why do police lie? According to the Times, in many circumstances, it's to avoid restrictions against unconstitutional stop and frisks. In other cases, the motive is to convict someone regardless of whether or not that person actually committed the crime. Some officers have stated they are pressured by their supervisors to write more tickets, to reach an arrest quota, or to close a case. There's no fear of being caught, a Brooklyn police officer who has been on the force for almost a decade told the Times, you're not going to go to trial and nobody is going to be cross-examined. The percentage of cases that progress to the cross-examination of an officer is quite small. According to the article in 2016, for example, there were slightly more than 185 guilty pleas, dismissals, or other non-trial outcomes for each criminal case in New York City that went to trial and resulted in a verdict. There were 1,460 trial verdicts in criminal cases that year, while 270,304 criminal cases were resolved without a trial. It should be noted, the Star-Telegram has filed an open records request for the body cam footage, as well as the survey surveillance footage that led officers to believe the suspect was at the motel. Police said that during the conversation, the sergeant apologized to the woman, answered questions from her and her family, and gave them information about the department's victim services team in case she needs additional assistance. In one of the TikTok videos posted thereafter, she said she was denied any sort of compensation from victim services, which officers directed her to contact because they said they don't have any programs for people that were accidentally held at gun point by their officers. She says she had to pay to relocate from the motel and was denied compensation for that as well as any compensation for legal or medical fees. 